Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson and today we're going to take a look at 15 different tips and tricks that are going to help you edit faster in Adobe Premiere Pro. These are some of my favorites and they're things that I actually use uh, quite often. Some of course I use more than others, but I think you're going to really enjoy it. I think you're going to find it useful, especially if you're editing video with Premiere, as I would expect if you click to watch this video. Well, you get the point. Let's just go ahead into Adobe Premiere and get this thing started. All right, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, and let's try to burn through these tips and tricks really quickly here. The first one that I want to share with you is one called three-point editing. Now, how does three-point editing work? Well, basically, the idea is that you open up a clip, and I just double-click any old clip, and it's going to open in the source panel. You go ahead and set an in and an out point, so this allows you to scrub through the clip and just pick exactly what you want. Maybe we want this shot here of Alcatraz. I hit the letter I to set an in point, hit the letter O to set an out point, and then I can just insert it or overwrite it on my timeline, or I can literally Literally just click and drag it out and drop it wherever I want. And this little clip that I'm dragging out is just that clip that we marked the in and out for. It's not the whole entire huge clip. The whole clip is quite a bit longer. Actually, if I drag it out of the, the project bin, it will also only drag see that little bit down there that's marked. It's only going to drag that little bit out for me. Uh, so let me go back to the source panel and I'm going to use my little insert option and I'm going to insert it right here between these clips. And you're going to see what it's going to do is it's going to respect both clips and the space around them and it will just place our clip right there so I'm going to go insert not overwrite but insert and you can see there's the clip and we got space on either side and it hasn't done any damage to our existing clips now there's a ton more you can do with three-point editing but that's the basics of it you mark the in and out of a clip drag it onto your timeline it's a really really fast way to begin laying out your video uh, and, and working with it. That brings us along to a very useful feature when you're working with three-point editing and working with a lot of B-roll. Let's say you've got a shot of B-roll and you're not quite sure where it came from. You know you got it from somewhere, but you're not sure which of your big strings of B-roll it came from. Well, you can just hover over the part of the video that you're interested in, like let's say this white building, hit the letter F. And you're going to see here, Premiere is going to shift this over to the source panel away from the program. And this is that clip. So I can see it's clip MVI 0189, but not only that, it takes me right to that frame uh, that we're looking at. So this is great. Let's say you shoot your B-roll like, you know, eight or 10 different angles in one continuous shot. You can quickly find where the shot is that you used and, you know, select a different part of it or, you know, see what else is going on around it. Maybe there are other types or angles that you, you wanted that are very similar and using match frame, you can quickly jump into the source of any one of these clips with just the click of a button. Let's go back to the beginning of my video here where I have this bit of water splashing on the rocks and maybe the client looks at it and they say you know what the the little wave splashing in it's just splashing in a little too quickly can we move it well tip number three is use the slip tool for these kind of adjustments so over here we have the slip and slide tools the slip tool is the more interesting one as far as I'm concerned you can click on a video clip and Premiere is going to give you kind of a heads up of where the clip is going to begin and where it's going to end and you can just click and drag and choose exactly exactly where you want your clip to begin or end. So I'm going to say, all right, maybe I'll just make it begin there at that random point. I'll, pro I'll probably turn my audio down a little bit. I'll make it begin at that point, And there we go. We have the same exact duration for the clip, but we've actually adjusted the video uh, that's being used. And well, how can we do that? Well, again, if I select the clip, hit the letter F, bring us back to match frame, I'm going to see that we're only using this very small little piece of this much larger clip. In fact, this is the same clip that has that shot of Alcatraz. I had just swung down and shot some of the rocks beneath my feet uh, before I put the camera away. So using the slip tool to make some adjustments there to your clip uh, can be really, really helpful and just help you fine tune what you've got going on. On, on your timeline. Now there is also sort of a reverse match frame and this is tip number four. Uh, let's open up this uh, Chinatown clip here and uh, let's say we want to use a piece of this uh, as B-roll but we can't remember if we've used it before or maybe we're working on the project with a few people. We don't know if this has been used in this timeline before. Uh, you can move to a particular frame, hit shift R and it will take you to that exact frame where it is used on your timeline and I can see, yep, here we go. We've used a whole big piece of this uh, shot of Chinatown here in this particular project. So that can be a really helpful way for you if you start losing track of which angles and which shots of B-roll you used. Uh, you can just go, you know, select the, the source clip in your source panel, move to the area you want, shift and the letter R not the letter E, that will export a frame. Shift in the letter R and it'll take you right to where that is on your timeline. Really a big time saver and, and very helpful. Now tip number five is you can alter option click to select just 
the video track or just the audio track by default you're going to have it just select a linked clip together which is very useful because usually you want your audio to travel with the video but sometimes you want to do something like what we did here at the beginning where we have the rocks and the water splashing and then we move to another shot of san francisco with alcatraz sitting out there uh and and what i've done if you look here we've had or we've made the audio continue underneath because up here all i had was the sound you know cars horns beeping and just the general non water watery stuff. So what I did was the clip was like this. I alt selected the audio for the clip here of the road and the woman walking by and all of that, deleted that, and then hold down alter option and just drag out the audio for the water underneath this. And just like that, we create this nice cut that allows the audio to continue right through uh, as we uh, observe this Toyota Corolla making a turn, but of course in front of Alcatraz. Okay, so another tip for those of you uh, who use a lot of B-roll, this one can be really, really uh, useful. Let's say you've got a bunch of B-roll and you're talking with your buddies and you're having a good time and you know somebody's making inappropriate jokes or just a shot like this where we have a lot of the stuff going on in the city and you want nice, beautiful cinematic music of the trolley ride instead of the clanking of the, the cables and the, the tracks and all of that. Well, how can I drag this in without audio? I just want the visuals of course you could drag it in right you could drag it if well normally you can drag it in <laughs> you could just drag it in and then alt click the audio and delete it but you know if you got to do that for all your clips it's just another little click and another little step uh, in your workflow so if you're working your b-roll and you're dragging it all in just come over here and click on a1 and it will shut off the patching for the audio and what that's going to do is just drag the video track in right we're not allowing any audio to be dragged in there's the video and we're golden. That one I find really useful, especially like I said, when I'm working with a lot of B-roll. All right, so check this out. Let's say we wanna take this clip here. This is tip number seven. Let's say we wanna take this clip and we want to move it so the video is above the clip before. Well, the problem is we move the video up, but the audio doesn't move up. So, well, of course, yeah, you move down, right? And you pull the audio down. But when I do that, then the video moves down as well. So that's kind of annoying. This is a little bit of a, a, a wonky, funky, not very intuitive a setup that Adobe has here. A couple ways we can go about doing this number one we can just select the clip hold down the alter option key and tap up and down with our arrow key so if i tap up one two move my video track up twice and then move the audio and video track both together down one there we go i've created a two track split i can slide it right over that's kind of my preferred method way uh, my preferred method of working with this you can hold down alter option tap up twice bing bing and down once and you're good it's pretty quick once you get the hang of it and once it's sort of muscle memory the other way you can do it is with a hot key and let me see if i can remember this right you drag up on the video and you hold down command and shift and drag down and then you move the clip into place so it's a little bit more like click in and if you let go of the hotkeys too early it gets messed up and doesn't quite work and again i i know it's it's funky it's weird it's hopefully something that adobe will figure out some ingenious solution for uh, because it's a little it's a little clunky. It's a lot clunky, if I'm being honest. All right, now, as you're editing stuff in Premiere, uh, maybe you're familiar with the ripple delete, where you can select something like the gap and just ripple delete, and it goes away. Now, up here under edit, there is ripple delete. I've set the hotkey X as my ripple delete button because I ripple delete all the time, so I just want it to be something quick and easy. Sometimes, though, when you're ripple deleting, you got a bunch of stuff stacked up, and maybe right here at, like, the seven-second mark, the client says, we have, uh, we've got this shot of this uh, little temple in the Japanese gardens and this has to remain. This cannot move from the seven second mark, right? Now, you're probably not gonna have this with video, but you may have like a text title or something like that that's in place that absolutely can't move or you don't want to move. Uh, or sometimes your audio is getting jammed up and ripple delete, you click ripple delete and it's just not working. Well, what I normally do to get around that is I lock up that track, right? Because now I can lock that track and I can ripple delete all kinds of everything. I could go ahead and select this first clip and ripple delete it and my temple shot is gonna stay right there at that seven second mark. So no matter where I am ripple deleting, that's going to kind of save it. But again, if you're working with more complex video projects, you might have 10, 15 or more tracks. You're going to have a bunch of tracks. So what I like to do is go up to keyboard shortcuts. The hotkey is command 
Option K, that'd be Control Alt K on the PC. And I like to have a hotkey set for right down here. You see this? Lock slash unlock all audio tracks. It's Option 2, that'd be Alt 2 on the PC. And Lock slash unlock all video tracks. Tracks. That's Alt or Option and then number 1. Those are not default. I've set them. So I hit OK. So it goes something like this. If I've got a music track and I don't want it to be messed with, I just go Option 2 and lock everything up. And then I'll unlock the layer that I know I need to ripple delete. Option 1 to lock of the video stuff and unlock the video track on which I'm working. So it can be a really fast way to quickly lock stuff up, make sure everything stays exactly where you want it to stay while you go through and flow and make these ripple uh, ripple edits and, and different cuts that are going to move things around. Okay, I'm going to drag a couple more clips out here and just stack some stuff. I'm going to turn the other patching back on to get some audio involved. I'm going to just stack some stuff right out of the source panel here uh, just, to, just to make things interesting and randomize and just mix stuff up, right? All right, now let's say we look at this and um, we're saying the this the central core all these cut clips here in the middle we want to move them down the timeline well of course you could say hey give me that uh, track select forward tool select that and slide it right down the timeline except it selects everything well one great way to use this tool is by simply holding the shift key click and then let go of the shift key and you can just click and drag and move one track of stuff and slide it up or down the timeline wherever you like. Hold down shift and you can even, of course, pull it right back to where you began. So throw that shift tool in there and it can be really helpful. Now, tip number 10 is remember that whole alter option thing before where you can select just a video track or just an audio track. Same thing applies here. So if we go shift and we start dragging, we say, you know what? I actually only want to take the audio, right? I don't even want to move the video. I just want to mess up the audio. You can hold down shift and hold down alt, just click the audio, and then of course let go of those hotkeys and go ahead and drag just that audio up or down your timeline to your heart's content. All right, time for tip number 11. This one will really speed up your editing. Let's say you've done something like this here where I've cut up all these clips and I've got them all in place and they're all kind of options. I wanna see what makes the most sense as it flips through all these different shots of B-roll. Well, I, let's say, get to a couple of these like this clip here and I just wanna get rid of it. Well, normally we would have to go ahead and select the full clip and delete it and move everything back. Or if you are a little bit more advanced, you, go, you would select the clip and ripple delete it or ripple delete it with a nice hotkey if you've pushed Premiere even a little bit further than that. But you can take it a step further than that. Up here in sequence, you can choose to have selection follow playhead. And what that means is wherever the playhead is, it's going to automatically select the clip that it's running over. Right now, this also might be an area where you have a bunch of clips all stacked up. You maybe want to lock up all those layers. So you're only selecting the specific clips you want to delete. Hover over that, hit your ripple delete button. And wherever the playhead is, it's going to ripple delete that clip that has been selected. So very quickly, I can go through and cut this set of shots down to just the couple shots that I want. So ripple delete the clip at the playhead. You want to make sure you turn on selection follows playhead and also Give yourself a nice ripple delete hotkey, something that is easy to get to and fast. Now for tip number 12, speaking of B-roll, we've got this shot of the inside of Alcatraz and maybe I want to replace it. The timing is perfect because let's just pretend like we have music here and everything's synced right up to the beat, but I really want like, I want this shot instead, right? So what I can do is I can hold down my alter option key, drag that clip out and drop it right on top of the clip that's there and it's going to replace that clip. It's not going to drag the whole entire clip out because as you can see, it's way bigger than what I have there, but it's just going to drop it right in as though that old clip was a container and it's going to constrain it right there within that little bit. That is a nice little trick. So tip number 13 is most of us know that if we hit the backslash button, it zooms out and shows us our entire timeline. But did you know that you can create a hotkey? There isn't one by default, but you can create a hotkey that zooms you into the frame. So zooms you in way close to wherever you have your little timeline scrubber, your playhead, I should say. So if we're right there and I want to zoom right in, boom, one hotkey I'm zoomed in, boom, one hotkey I'm zoomed out. Now to zoom out and show the full sequence, that's the backslash key. But if I open up my keyboard shortcuts again, here, I will show you this hotkey that I created. So we're going to type into search zoom, zoom to frame. There it is right there. Zoom to frame. And I just made it command in the backsplash, the back 
It's not splash, but slash key, command backslash. So backslash to zoom out, command backslash to zoom all the way in. It can be really nice to be able to jump in, jump out, jump in, jump out, and go back and forth without having to mess with this big scrubby thing down here, uh, which is always kind of, uh, it's touchy. All right, let's go out to these clips here and talk about the trim mode. If you're not using it, you're missing out. I use the hotkey shift T to enter trim mode. Uh, for some of you, it may be just the letter T, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's shift T at this point. And what's, what's going to happen when you do that is Premiere is going to jump your playhead to the nearest cut. So you can see my playhead's out here in the middle of this clip. Shift T jumps me to the nearest playhead. And at that point, I can immediately begin trimming clips. Or if I hold down command or control, right, you would end up uh, using your normal ripple delete but that's really not the way that trim is meant to be used you can hover over the whole clip up here and you can trim just like that so you can drag and see exactly where the trim is going to happen so maybe i want this to happen right as my trolley gets to that uh, little crosswalk or maybe not maybe i want to pull it back a little bit maybe i'll make it as the car is going over the crosswalk voila right there is where the cut happens that's on this clip so clip 288 down here now i'll hover over the other side and let's say we want to make this jump a little bit further so the car is going to be you know halfway up the hill when it comes back so now what we've just done is we've made this trim where the car jumps from the crosswalk halfway up the side of the hill. I'm gonna undo that real quick. One more thing I wanna show you here with trim is you can select in between the clips and perform a rolling edit as well. Kind of difficult here because this is all the same clip. Let's see if we can, uh, let's go to an area where we don't have all the same clip. Let's go back to here where we were before with all these different clips. If we enter into the trim mode here, we can perform a rolling edit between these two clips and just choose like, all right, we want the, the clips to jump from one to the other at this point. And now you can see we've made this clip to the left a lot smaller and the one to the right a lot bigger. And there's no gap. It's just going to continue playing right on through. So rolling edits are very easy. There's a lot you can do. It's a really, really nice way to go in and ripple delete and perform rolling edits. And by the way, you can still do things like hold down your alter option key. And with that little juncture selected, right, that cut in the video, hold on alter option and just use your arrow keys and fine tune uh, exactly where the frame is and where you want to change it. Stuff like that is definitely still possible as well. And by the way, exiting trim mode, just click away from it and you're back to, you know, quote unquote normal editing mode. It's still kind of normal editing mode. It's just kind of a, a more powerful form of editing mode. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and let's go to one of these shots of Alcatraz. I want to pick an indoor shot here. Let's go with this one. And let's say it's time to color grade, right? So we'll go window. We're going to say, give me that Lumetri color. Lumetri color pops open for us. And uh, we'll look through our different looks here. Maybe I'll just use my arrows here. Oh, that one actually is pretty good. So I'm going to click that to apply it. It's super powerful as most of these LUTs are. So you just want to tone back the intensity, maybe something like that. I'll boost the sharpening a little. I'm going to go to basic correction. I'm going to make it a little bit greener, a little bit more orange. I'm also going to just decrease the exposure a little bit and maybe reduce the contrast overall, something like that. Maybe darken just the blacks, but boost the overall shadows, something sort of like that. But as I'm working on this, I don't know what before and after looked like. Of course, I could go and check everything on and off. I could go over here to my effect controls and say, all right, uh, shut off Lumetri color. All right, there's before and there's after Lumetri color, right? Things like that. But there's a faster way to do this. Again, if we go back to our hotkeys, command option or control alt and the letter K, Adobe has given us a way to kind of temporarily shut off Lumetri color while we're working. So if we type in bypass here, we see here bypass Lumetri color effects. I've just gone option and the letter A. You can just find a hotkey you have open. Now, the way this works is you do need to have the Lumetri color panel open and you need to have it selected. So we have, we're working on our video clip, let's say, and uh, this is not a hotkey where you click it once. So what you do is you click and hold. So I'm going to go option A, I'm going to hold it, and there it is before my grading. As soon as I let go of the hotkey, it goes back to uh, the graded clip so I can see exactly what's going on. So I can get this very quick before after when I'm going through and color grading. This can be just extremely helpful uh, for you when you're, when you're really doing anything with your color grading and your video projects here in Premiere. I'm going to close out Lumetri color panel real quick. And the last little tip that I want to show you, and it's something that can be really helpful if you're not running the fastest of computers, or even if you have the fastest of computers, video editing is, it's heavy stuff, man. So this is something that can be super useful. Go ahead and hit the plus key here for your button editor. And you got all sorts of different fun things to choose from. The one I want to direct your attention to today is this FX button. This is the global effects mute button. I have mine right here in my toolbar. I use it all the time. And basically, 
What it does is it disables all of the effects, all the visual effects throughout your video. So if I click that, you're going to see our color grading goes away. It's still there. It's just hidden. So I click it and turn all of the effects back on. They all come back on. But it's nice sometimes to just shut them off when things are slowing down because shutting off all those effects will usually allow the video to play a lot smoother and a lot more quickly for you. So I think that about wraps it up. That's 15 or 16 uh, tips or tricks that are going to help you rip through Premiere and edit your videos a lot faster. And that's it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure, of course, you subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on. And also check out this tutorial on three of the best new features of Adobe Premiere Pro, at least kind of around the time that I'm recording this video. Uh, and you can do that by using that link that appeared right there on the screen. Hope you enjoy it. And thank you for sticking around and watching this video all the way to the end. I really do appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.